Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at Activision Blizzard. Um, if you're not familiar, they are a um, video game maker. They make like World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, uh, Candy Crush. Those are kind of their three big games. Stocks currently trading at 94.92. Market cap is 72 billion. If we kind of looked at the last year, they've actually shot up pretty significantly um, from stock stock valuation perspective. Uh, mostly just because they've been doing very well in the pandemic they were one of the companies that really succeeded from everyone sitting at home all the time so i thought it'd be fun to kind of do a little look at it and see um what what all is going on here um with the company so first thing right pulling the income statement this is from their 10k maybe broken out by three divisions and then other if you look in the mdna so we can kind of look at how those three things have performed and then um, I put Call of Duty is the main driver of Activision. World of Warcraft is the main driver of Blizzard. Then there's some of the other popular titles in there. And then Candy Crush really drives the King segment. Um, so we have that. And then if you look at the balance sheet, pulled that in. Um, a little confusing if you're trying to reconcile their capital expenditures and then their DNA. So kind of throughout, um, they report DNA as one item, but they they include uh, amortization of capitalized software costs, but then they don't include that in their capital expenditures. So you get like a really funky number, but they do have um, in the filings, they have a schedule that breaks out just the DNA related to their true capital expenditures. Um, the reason I don't include, and let me pull up the 10K real quick just so you can see what I'm looking at here. Um, so here we'll see, they have a little footnote here saying, you know, 117, 124, and 138 is the DNA. But if we go to the um, cash flow statement, um, where is that at? Let me just, you'll see their DNA here is like much higher, 197, 328, and 509. And this includes software amortization costs that are being captured in cost of revenue. Um, and, you know, I kind of wish they, I can't find a good schedule that shows the total software um, amortization costs of what they're capitalizing and then versus what the DNA amount here is. So basically, you know, they prepay for software product, software costs for um, production of games. And then when the game launches and then as sales are recognized, they'll recognize some of the, the offsetting expense. Um, so, you know, I think that's something you could dig into to try to really figure out to, to fine tune this this DCF, but I've just ignored the software development costs. I think it's relatively minimal. We're still getting, we're still capturing the portion that's tied to revenue, but there's obviously some software costs that are that are happening and impacting the cash flow as they're developing games that aren't necessarily captured on here. But there is still product development costs, um, so it's only certain parts of capex um, of software development that you can capitalize. So I don't think it's going to material change materially have an impact on the. <clears throat> the DCF here. So I've just backed it out for now because I couldn't quite figure out um, from their their 10K uh, how it was all flowing to, to come up with a good estimate here. But um, I think the first thing we need to look at really is just their growth in each segment. So we'll see like, right, Activision, which is Call of Duty, grew 80% from 2019. I think this is very much pandemic driven, um, kind of in the pandemic. A lot of people have, you know, they're sitting at home you know, downloading Call of Duty, other games, playing a lot more games. They launched a free-to-play Call of Duty version where there's like in-game sales, things like that. So um, while they grew 78%, I don't think they'll stay at this level through 2021. I think as the world opens back up, people will play less video games. So I'm I'm assuming they're going to have kind of a slight decline. I think they'll still be higher than the 2458 or the 2600, but I don't, I think, you know, they'll, they'll definitely kind of return down to the normal. And obviously they're getting half a year still where the world is still pretty much cut down or locked down while the vaccine is rolled out. Um, but I, I just, you know, part of me doesn't think um, these growth rates are gonna continue for them. I think that this is really them benefiting um, from the pandemic. So, and feel free to disagree. Obviously I upload these models so you can go in here and tweak your own. Um, assessments of how you think the company's going to perform as well. And, you know, maybe, you know, I'm thinking they'll probably have maybe even like kind of back to, like, I think they're going to do better than 2019, but much less than 2020, 
just because a lot of people sat at home and played video games. Um, but then from there, you know, I think we look historically, right? It was a dying franchise, but I think this new free to play model, you know, I'll give them some credit and say, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we'll start at like 5%. Um, we'll just kind of see how that plays out for Call of Duty. Um, you know, and there's a new console refresh, all this stuff. So kids are buying the game. Um, but I think once the world opens, there's going to be a big mass exodus from video games. People are going to be excited to go back out and do things on a Friday night, on a Saturday and a Sunday, instead of sitting at home playing Call of Duty with their friends. Um, so we'll make that Blizzard. So this is World of Warcraft. We can see, you know, this is kind of, it's kind of all over the place, but they did actually, in 2020, they did launch a new expansion for World of Warcraft. So, um, you know, and it, it 2019 was pretty rough, you know, big drop there. They didn't even get back to 2018 levels, even with the pandemic. Um, but I think with this new launch of the, of, you know, I don't, World of Warcraft Shadowlands, I think is what it was called in their 10K. Um, you know, I think in our first case, let's be optimistic here. Let's assume they're going to get a little bit of growth and then people are going to, you know, they're going to play the expansion and then kind of stop. And then we're going to go back to being this like kind of, declining World of Warcraft business. Um, Candy Crush, this is an interesting one. This is, um, right, a mobile game that's been around forever. It seems it's, oops, seems like it hasn't really gone anywhere, um, which is fascinating. You know, I never realized it was a $2 billion a year, but it hasn't really grown either. You know, it's just kind of hovers around $2 billion, So I'll give them, oops. Sorry, let's just do this as 3%. And my thought here is the reason I don't want all these to be declining is I'm trying to be optimistic in the sense that they're going to continue to innovate and come out with new games and things like that. Um, you know, Overwatch was really big for a few years there, but it's been declining is what they've been mentioning. So, you know, is what it is. And then this other piece, I mean, this is probably just like other miscellaneous. I think like Overwatch League, Call of Duty League, things like that are in here. I mean, it looks like it's average 379. I think if we start on the 75 million and we grow it 10%, um, we'll, we'll see here. That'll probably get it to grow back up to kind of 100 million or so, a couple hundred million. Um, and we'll see how that kind of turns out, but I'm not going to expect this to be like a big growth driver and you know i'm not entirely sure why it dropped so much they don't have a lot of detail on it but you know that seems fair it gets back to kind of these other levels i don't know if they've moved things out of this in 2020 and moved it into the segments or what but we'll just kind of leave it like that Let's sum this up real quick and we'll see um right so we're saying real benefit from 2020 due to the pandemic and then you know a little decrease and then a couple years from now they'll be back to this pandemic level and kind of keep growing at a steady state. I think that's probably relatively fair and we can look at kind of the overall growth rate as well here and calculate those. So, you know, decrease and then four, three, three, three. So I'd say this is probably a pretty conservative case. This is assuming their current games. Um, and so in the reports, they say Call of Duty, World of Warcraft and Candy Crush make up 76% of their sales. That's terrifying, right? One of those games does bad and this company tanks. So you have to constantly be investing in that. Um, so we'll, we'll see, but um, just, you know, so everyone's aware of kind of how risky some of these cash flows are, and they really do have to continue to, to grow them. And if we look historically, like there's not a clear trend that any of these are just super strong growth. They're all over the place. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of tough to actually make predictions on this. Cogs, you know, things looking good. Uh, margins have been improving. Um, you know, cogs should go down as you sell more units because more people are playing the you know the software cost to develop the game are now amortized over more copies sold so um you know i think for now i'll hold it at oops 30 percent uh which is kind of between these two my guess is like you know you have to continue to make new games some games aren't going to do well um they'll have higher cogs worse margins so we'll we'll do it like that for now product development historically 14 15 percent will be we'll give them you know, we'll give them the, the one percentage. We'll leave it at 14%. Um, sales and marketing, right? 16, 18, 20, 14, 14, 13. Do they have to make a stronger push? I don't know. Um, I think I'll set this at like 
fifteen percent for now. My thought here is, you know, they come out with a new game, they're gonna have big advertising campaigns. Um, even like Shadowlands, they probably had to have a bunch of advertising there. So maybe, you know, as new things come out, they're gonna have to market more aggressively to kind of keep their market share. Um, GNA, right, it's 10, 11, let's leave that at 10%. Tax rate all over the place. If you look at like the historical tax rate, um, So we'll just do 21%. Um, that's the federal regulation, right? You could say, you know, maybe the offshore stuff. I think 2017, what we saw here, um, if you look at that tax rate, the reason why it jumped so much is that was like the repatriation of cash, I think. Um, so there's a big one-time kind of jump there um, in tax rate for them as they brought a bunch of cash that was overseas back. So um, CapEx is a percent. You know, I think if they want to continue to grow, it's going to have to be historical at 2% to maintain growth. Depreciation has obviously been over 100% recently. I always set it to 80%. That shows that, you know, there's growth capex in there. Um, so we'll kind of leave it like that. And then current assets, current liabilities as a percent of revenue. So if you look at like the networking capital turn, um, which is your networking capital divided by your revenue, um, kind of all over the place. But if we look at it as a percentage, right, this is averaging 20% and this is averaging 19%. So maybe for starters, we'll just uh, leave those at 20 and 19%. And we'll see where we kind of get on the valuation spectrum here. So let's set this up real quick. This times Perfect. And then that'll give us, uh, oops, I want to calculate this as this one now, this blue. So you guys, if you open up the model, you know that that means it's inputted cell. Oops, that's the wrong one. What color? We'll do that color. This will go black because it's formula now. Copy over the formula. Okay. <laughs> So it is what it is, but I mean, it really does just neutralize out the, the impact of working capital on the company. And we can see they've just had wild swings here. Um, so we'll do that and let's come look and see kind of the valuation range we're getting now. So I think this is a risky company, um, without a doubt. I think this is much riskier. Uh, my, my reason being on that is 76% of your revenue is concentrated in Call of Duty, World of Warcraft and Candy Crush. Um, here, let me, let me see. Okay. So overwatch, um, but so it's pretty risky, right? So NPV of the cash flows, terminal growth rate, 3%, which is kind of an inflation gives you a terminal value, present value that less net debt. I actually think I have to like link, link this up still. So let's see, um, where is their net debt? Let's see, long-term debt, less cash um, so the enterprise value is here if we actually want to add that it's going to reduce the equity value because um, the enterprise value is what you have to pay to acquire the whole company but actually i guess that would you yeah, know the signs are right there um, that's saying, this is saying they have basically $5 billion of surplus cash on balance sheet. So if you bought them for 39 billion, you'd really be paying 34 billion, or sorry, if the equity would be worth 44 billion because you'd have the extra 5 billion of cash. Um, so 45 billion-ish is what we're getting here. Um, and obviously, right, if you set this to 12, um, you kind of get a 40 to 51 billion dollar range and if we look at current market cap right it's trading at 72 billion and i mean in reality though right if you go back to pre-pandemic you're going to take a third off their market cap take what 20 billion off um, pre-pandemic they were probably valued pretty well um, in this post state my guess is their current valuation is reflective of saying that this um, growth they've experienced in 2020 they're going to be able to kind of maintain some of that um, and obviously, right, if you only required a 10% return or I guess a 9% return, you're a lot closer, but I think it is pretty risky. 
Um, so maybe if you threw like a 14% risk on here and we came here and said, you know what, actually they're going to keep up these growth rates um, for the most part. Let's give them, and they're not going to decrease. They're actually going to grow off this, um, you know, maybe is that even, I don't even know if that moves the needle. Um, at a 14, it doesn't, maybe at a 12, you know, you're getting closer. So maybe you have to say, instead of 80% growth, they're going to go back to like a 20% growth, and then we'll have this decrease by 2% a year. But, you know, I just, I don't really see Call of Duty continuing to grow and become this massive, massive franchise. Um, but, you know, then you start to get something closer with the risk we're throwing on it, but you're also throwing on way riskier assumptions here. Um, so you're assuming that they're really going to, you know, be able to maintain some of this growth and just slowly decline back to about a 3%. I don't know. It's, it's a tough one to look at, um, but definitely an interesting one. And, you know, if they can get another hit game, right, um, that, that sticks around, like Overwatch was going to be that for a while, but it's kind of died off. Um, but, you know, another Call of Duty, World of Warcraft or Candy Crush, right, that can bring in another two to four billion dollars of revenue a year um, and have some growth potential behind it could be pretty well um, but yeah I think you know I would say they're probably slightly overvalued in my eyes um, but it also depends if you think that this video game craze that happened this year is going to continue into the future then you know maybe they actually are you know at a 12 percent discount they're actually still pretty pretty fairly valued and if you don't think it's that risky right and you're like oh it's not risky at all then you know you're you're thinking they're undervalued. Um, I don't know. I, I think these projections are definitely the the bull case. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Hope you found it useful. Love to hear your thoughts below. So if you have any questions or comments, any thoughts, leave them below. And if there's any other companies you'd like to see me pull a model together, let me know. Um, thanks for tuning in.